Hello and welcome on 360 Spot on Trust TV. I am Adini Aji Shafe. We just have to look at the world of sport. Yes, that's weekend and the World Cup is really very close now. It will be starting on Sunday. The whole world can't wait to see what will be coming up in Qatar 2022, where 32 nations will be slugging out. We'll see who wins this year edition of uh, World Cup trophy. It's always a big one whenever the countries across the globe gather together to play football. Welcome you once again on the show. We'll be looking at so many stories that have to do with the World Cup. It's World Cup weekend, as uh, a lot of people are right now going to see. Even though Nigeria is not going to the World Cup, we just have to appreciate the fact that those nations that are qualified, they really deserve to be there. Let's start. Before we look at the World Cup, yes, Nigeria play against Portugal in a friendly game, and it was not uh, an expected result from Nigeria. So, uh, focusing, we're looking at the focus. Focus Portugal versus Nigeria friendly. That's the first topic we'll be looking at as we talk about this. Uh, Portugal versus Nigeria, a match that we saw uh, a trashing of Super Eagles 4 0. That was on Thursday evening uh, between Nigeria and Port uh, Portugal, but there in Lisbon at the Estadio Albalade, where we were defeated by the Selecao of uh, Portugal. Well, we'll be looking at that particular story first with uh, Vincent Okara in the studio. Good to have Vincent. Thank you for having me. Good. That game against uh, Portugal, <laughs> from your own view, let me, how did you see uh, Super Eagles? What, what a disappointing, uh, dis disappointing play from them. Mm. I was so disappointed yesterday. From the goalkeeper to the top nine, they played nothing. I saw nothing. Since they sacked the previous coach, this coach came in thinking he's coming with a different pattern, but nothing to show for it. Mm. See. From uh, the, the left back, it was the, for me, that's my opinion anyway, it was the worst performance yesterday. He doesn't know how to attack at the right time. When keeper was with the ball yesterday, was the time keeper was with the ball, was looking for him to throw the ball to. That is so wrong. It, I don't even understand the, the pattern the coach was playing yesterday. Then originally in Jeng, Paul Onachu, he doesn't come to the back to receive the ball. Paul Onachu is a, is, a, is, a, is a central striker. He's always on the ball, so he just wants to score. But yesterday, man, he had to come to the back. He was finding it so difficult to play. I don't, I don't even know what he's doing in the match yesterday. Hmm. I don't well, know, I, I, actually, uh, on Thursday night, <laughs> you know, because of the pain, I understand the pain you are going through as you keep referring to yesterday. It's actually on, th on Thursday you, you know, that that match was played. Yes. And, uh, well, uh, from the way it is, when you go to that penalty issue where Dennis was uh, refusing to release the ball. Exactly. That shows lack of discipline in the team. Hmm. That shows lack of discipline. Even the captain came to him, gave me the ball. Normally, I think Nigeria has somebody who is taking the penalty who happens to be Trost Ekong. The last time we played Ghana, during the qualification, we did not qualify for the World Cup. The last time we played Ghana, Trost Ekong played the penalty. So what happened yesterday? The coach was even signifying, he was, was raising his hand yesterday. That, on Thursday, sorry, I was I'm making, because The coach was raising his hand. Give it to the captain to play the ball. But he said, no, at the end of the day, lost. We, we don't deserve to lose to Portugal. They are a good team, not disputing the fact. They are one of the best teams in the world. Not 4 0. Not 4 0. Nigeria is bigger than 4 0. We are not Togo. We are not Kutoria Guinea. We are 31st in the world, in far ranking in world football. So we are not supposed to, supposed to be losing to Fed. What if we are in the World Cup and we are playing Portugal? Is that That's how we are going what to somebody lose? said. Somebody was like, okay, what if Nigeria had qualified? Was that how they would play? That is the question I ask. Too that on Thursday, that was the question I asked too. They played. They, there is no passion. There was no. There is no. There is nothing like commitment in that team. I don't. I think they should talk. The coach has to. He has to ask some answer some questions. Uh, but, but a lot of uh, Nigerians are looking at. Okay, we may be interference because we saw that uh, uh, people are like maybe agents are trying to see if their uh, players will play. You understand? Uh, and also NFF, uh, maybe I'll let my boy play also that, that's, cost that's, that. that. To some extent, we don't expect Jose Pizero to watch. Even when Dennis did that in a very indisciplined act, he was supposed to be pulled out instantly, instantly to yes. show to others as a deterrent so that they can stop all that. Instead of, you know, now that uh, Emmanuel continues, it looks like, okay, after Something all. Something is wrong somewhere. Yes, so after I, all, I can also do the same thing. So the truth is, when this man came in, yeah, I said, yeah, he's a white man, there's no sentiment. But it's very obvious that something is wrong somewhere. It doesn't change, even if it's a black... See, all the nations, all the African nations that went to the World Cup, all the six nations, they came in with their indigenous coach. Why are we hiring white man for? To pay him big money? Uh, former England uh, uh, coach, 
Goran Henriksen. He came out three days ago with a confession that when he was applying for a Nigeria job, they took him to Sharatin Hotel in Abuja here. They were telling him a discussion to the contract to sign that so so amount will be paid to you in so so account. You, but you, when it's official, you come out and tell them this is how much it's paid to. He, he said he doesn't, he doesn't like anything that is not straight. So he said that three days ago. So that, that means it's still happening. That man told me my opinion that I don't think it's, it, it won't take Nigeria to anywhere. Well, we've been looking at Nigeria versus Portugal, that friendly that took place over there in uh, Lisbon, where we lost uh, a beast Mali, lackluster wise. In fact, you can use any grammar to qualify it. Super Eagles didn't fly that night. It was a painful experience for Nigerians who couldn't just see the fact that we are not going to the World Cup. Eagles were expected to come out, at least show their class that yes, they need to play for Nigerians at home and also play for their pride. They were too lackluster, too uncaring. They didn't care much about the uh, emotions of Nigerians, who really are the ones that allowed them to be there. Donning the color of Super Eagles or the color of Nigeria on any pitch across the globe, it's not that you are the best player. You are just being given the opportunity. There are better players who never have the chance to play for Nigeria. Well, it's food for thought there. We are, as we actually looked at Portugal versus Nigeria and friendly, started the show with that particular scenario. It was a very painful loss. A lot of Nigerians. It means that uh, the fact that we didn't qualify for the World Cup. Really, Eagles were not ready. And I keep saying it. Ghana were, they were much more ready and they deserve to get that slot that they got. So we expect that the Black Stars will actually justified that by the time they get to Qatar. Now let's, uh, uh, we have to, let's look at it this way. Just on 29th of March 2022, Nigerians couldn't believe what happened to them when we faced Ghana. It was a shocking defeat and it's also a shocking uh, outstar from the World Cup qualifiers. When Nigeria were thinking, okay, you couldn't do the business over there in Ghana. Now that you are home, we we'll all come out in mass to support you. Nigerians came out in mass to support Uba at the MQ Abela Stadium and it was a massive support. Alas, they dampened the spirit of Nigerians that evening. Well, let's uh, remind you again with this particular clip, Nigeria versus Ghana playoff.
Nigerians will never forget this particular day, 29 March 2022, a night that uh, <laughs> you've all been sent. Uh, really, uh, well, you look at that particular scenario, you feel, what, what, what happened to Eagles? Why couldn't you just do it? They did everything they could, but it never worked out. I still remember 2006 World Cup at the expense of Nigeria and Angola. I was able to make the Pelang uh, Pelangra Necrise of uh, Angola. They were able to qualify. Now, Ghana did it, and really, I'm supporting them. They deserve to be there. Eagles were not ready for this. And if they are qualified, it will have been disastrous. Let's just not deceive ourselves. You just saw there that particular clip, a bitter appeal in the mouth of Nigeria. I, I wish I can tell you not to play that clip. <laughs> I'll try, I just have to play it. I just have to play because now we can remind the Nigerians. Yeah. what happened uh, yeah. the World Cup qualifier the playoffs and yeah. uh, the World Cup is starting tomorrow and right now a lot of Nigerians uh, couldn't just comprehend yeah. that really we are not going it is now dawning on them oh. can't wait for tomorrow me anyway mm. so uh, this day I've been praying or looking out for tomorrow when I wake up in the morning I'll say that I don't think I'll go to anywhere tomorrow but <laughs> because it'll be very memorable you know, Nigeria is not there so, but you have to take that fight away from you that, so you can enjoy the football they want to play. Tomorrow, Qatar, a very small nation, the smallest nation to ever host the tournament. Just as of 2021, there are 2.9 uh, million uh, population. So it's less than Abuja, I city. So they are coming tomorrow, but they've been doing well. Though, like three weeks ago, Sir Blatter came out to say the, 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 the worst decision they ever took as a FIFA president was to give them the hosting right. Mm. So I don't know where that is coming from, but that is what he said. But so far, they have the money, they have all the resources. This money we had, they are even inviting their neighboring state, their neighbor, people close to them that should come and watch the football. They will give you 10 pounds and three square meal and accommodation for free. Mm. That means they are ready for the tournament. Just because they, they want to host the world. Hold, the world. Good morning there. We've been looking at, uh, well, Nigerians. We just have to take you back to have that particular uh, clip. Well, really painful, but we just have to be happy for our neighbors and our brother, Ghanaians. That's the black stars of Ghana. They got that, and right now we celebrate them. Now, let's talk about the NWFL November 30 Women League kickoff date remains. According to the COO, uh, that's uh, the Chief Operating Officer, Modukwe, saying, well, from the way it is, no, all the clubs that will be participating in this competition will just have to prepare because November 30, they are not going to change that date. They will make sure the league starts for women. Women's league? No, I've not seen anything. Nigeria is, I like on Nigeria government, NFF have not really shown interest in the women's league, but from all indication, the the, the, the efforts they are putting to this particular one this time around, I just hope, hopefully, it will be different from the other ones. Hopefully it will be yeah. different. We hope to see Nigerian ladies. It's getting better uh, when it comes to football, women football in Nigeria. And now uh, we've seen what the women have really done this year, 2022. In all angles, they've really done well. And now when it comes to Nigerian Women Football League, November 30 is sacrosanct, according to the Chief Operating Officer, and that will be happening. Uh, well, let's wait and see. Maybe, maybe, truly, the league will be starting, even though it's edging very close. Now we quickly move away from there. Let's go to the proper. What club will be starting? And the Yes, we know on Sunday, that's tomorrow, it will be starting afresh, Qatar versus Ecuador. But let's look at some figures, World Cup figures, uh, some numbers, uh, at least, uh, that makes the World Cup for 2022. We start with, uh, uh, let's look at all the uh, story one by one, as it will be, uh, as we'll be unveiling all the figures for you there. Clubs with the highest representation, we have Bayern Munich with 17, uh, yes, uh, 17 players, Barcelona 16, you have Man City in that pecking order, Manchester United, Al Saad 15. Real Madrid a team, you have Chelsea 12, Al Hilal 12, PSG 11, Athletic 1. In total, 298 clubs are going to be represented in this competition. Uh, last week, we rolled all the, money, uh, the amount of money they'll be earning. The winner of the competition will get $42 million. Now, league sending leagues now, all the leagues sending the most, uh, the most players. Premier League, actually, they have 135 players that will be playing at the World Cup. La Liga, 86. Bundesliga, 81. You have Serie A, 71. And Ligue 1, they have 58 players that will be at the World Cup. Players on squad playing in the domestic league most. Well, you have Qatar and Saudi Arabia. The players are playing their league. They are 26 each. England, 25. 
Germany 20, Spain 18, and you have Mexico showing you, giving you all the numbers that has to do with the World Cup. Now, let's continue with uh, actually looking at the numbers now. Average age of each squad, the oldest, Iran, they have 28.9, Mexico 28.5 as the average age of that squad, Argentina. They have the 27.9. That's uh, uh, Celeste Tunisia. They have uh, 27.8. Brazil, the Samba Boys, the Selecao, as they also call them, they have 27.8. The youngest age of each squad, we have Ghana, 24.7. USA, 25.1. Ecuador, with 25.6. Spain, the same thing. You have uh, 25.6. They have Morocco and Cameroon with 26.2. Uh, each looking at the average age of each squad, uh, taking, talking about numbers at the World Cup. Experience at the national team level, average caps, that is how many times they've actually showcased uh, been appearing there. Most, Qatar, uh, you have Qatar 56.6, .6, Belgium 51.5, Mexico 49.4, Uruguay 45.5, and you have Costa Rica 43.2, and the fewest, you have Ghana. 16.8, Morocco, 20, Australia, Cameroon, and Senegal in that pecking order. To let you know that these are the work of statisticians taking note of all this. Oldest player at this tournament is a Mexican Talavera, who is 40 years old. You have Pepe of Portugal, 39. You have Dani Alves of Brazil, Hoshinshin, rather, Kawashima of Japan, Paz Vea. All of these players are the oldest players at the tournament. Most combined international goal scored by all players for each team so far. Belgium, 246, followed by Portugal, Qatar, the same point of, uh, the same uh, score line of 192. You have France 179. Uruguay with 173 as the most combined international goal scored by all players for each team. Youngest player at the tournament, although we need to look at the oldest player anyway. Mukoko is the youngest player 2018 on the first day of the tournament. 18 years we have Gavi, Abdul Fatau Ishaku, Jewison Bennett, Garan Kuo of Australia, Yusufa Mukoko, Bilal El Kanos. 23 players have never featured at the international level. 13 teams are bringing such players with Portugal, Cameroon, Ghana, and the Netherlands leading the way with three each. Now, uh, if we look at, uh, although we look at the old, uh, oldest player earlier anyway, uh, now those are the, at least uh, the figures when it comes to uh, 2022 FIFA World Cup. Uh, really, we just have to appreciate the statisticians because like I always say, in sport, whatever you study, whatever you know how to do, you can use it to work in sport. Why? Now, all these figures were actually computed by uh, statisticians, computer scientists, mathematicians, whatever, that are actually taking uh, charge of uh, figures. And also, each club or each country, they have someone there who takes record. Um, that is actually, uh, I don't know how to explain it this time around. But it's actually it's good for for some of uh, some some person who doesn't know mm. who doesn't know uh, like me. You're, I'm I'm hearing it for the first time mm. too. Yeah, so it's it's actually good. Now uh, you look at you know if you look at each game, okay. each game, each tournament, there are records to be broken, there are records to be achieved, there are records that have been met, that those are still standing, that are yet to be broken, and all that. But the reason why we picked the 2022 World Cup special is because it's just starting on Sunday, mm -hmm. and we will need to know. We've been taking it one by one. We've looked at some uh, squad lists. Mm -hmm. well, we've looked at how much money is actually in mm -hmm. this competition. Mm -hmm. Teams, are, uh, the players, each player, how, how much do they get? We looked at that last week, and each country releasing their player club side, mm -hmm. how much would they generate for qualifying, you know, Nigeria, if we are there, we know how much money we'll have earned for being the father will qualify for the World Cup. Well, uh, really, you can't take figures away from football, even sport. It's part of it because somebody must win. And if somebody actually come by 0.01, that person gets the point. So that's it. That's why we have to look at those figures. Now, let's highlight 2022 World Cup squad as uh, the remaining uh, seven teams, at least, uh, actually aligned so many uh, before the World Cup starts. Now, we are going to be looking at seven more, but starting with Qatar, the host nation. Let's look at the squad of Qatar as they listed them out there. Saad al Shiv, Meshal Bashan, Yusef Hassan. They are the goalkeepers for Qatar. Defenders have 
Pedro Miguel, Musa Kidero, you have Tarek Salman, Basam Al Rawi, Bolem Koki, Abdul Karim Hassan, Homam Ahmed, Jasim Gaba. In the midfield, you have Ali Assad, Asim Adabo, Mohamed Wahad, Salem Al Hajri, Mustafa Tarek, Karim Boudiaf. Abdulaziz Atim, Ismail Muhammad, you have the forward, the strikers, Naif Al Hadrami, Ahmed Al Adin, you have Hassan Al Hedos, uh, Khalid Munia, Akram Afif, Al Moez Ali, and uh, Mohamed Montari. Those are the players that represented the host nation Qatar at the World Cup. And quickly, let's move away from uh, Qatar to Ecuador. Meanwhile, Qatar will be facing Ecuador in the first game. Yeah. So, goalkeepers, we have Moses Ramirez. Alexander Dominguez, Hanan Galindez, the defenders we have Piero in Cavi, you have uh, Robert Abuleda, Pavis Exupina, Angelo Preciado, Jackson Porozo, Savia Arriaga, Felix Torres, you have Diego Palacios, William Pacho. In the midfield, you have Carlos Crezo, Grezo rather, Jose Sifuentes, Alan Franco, Moises uh, Caicedo, and Angel Mina. You have Jeremy Samiento, Elton Preciado, uh, Sebastian Mendez. Gonzalo Plata, and you have Romaria Ibarra. In the, at the forward, you have Jokel Resco, Kevin Rodriguez, Michael Estrada, Ena Valencia. Those are the players representing Ecuador at the World Cup. Now, we look at Wales. Wales will also be playing at the World Cup. Wayne Hennessy, Danny Ward, and Adam Davies are the goalkeepers. The defenders have Ben Davies, Ben Cabango, Tom Lockyer, Joe Rondin, uh, Rodin, rather. You have Chris Mepham. Ethan Ampadu, you have uh, Chris Gunter, Nico Williams, Connor Roberts, midfield, Soba Thomas, Joe Allen, Matthew Smith, Dylan Levitt, Harry Wilson, Joe Morrell, Johnny Williams, Aaron Ramsey, uh, Robin Colwell, and forward you have Gareth Bale, Kiefer Moore, Mark Harris, you have Brenna Johnson, Daniel James. Well, uh, those are the three first. We have here four to go. But now, before we go to those four, uh, 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 Vincent, yeah. we roll out those names because a lot of people don't know most yeah. of this uh, of uh, squad list. We've been taking it uh, three, three, two, like that from day one. But now we have four left, but we are taking three just now. Yeah. Okay, uh, from uh, Qatar, the host nation, mm. I think I've, I've always said it. They are just there to complete the number. Mm. Yeah, the, the normal thing, they are hosting. So the, the stadium will be jam-packed tomorrow, definitely. But they are just there to, compa to, to complete the number of the 32 team. I don't see them coming out of the group. Mm. So yeah, I see Netherlands and Senegal coming out of that group anyway. Okay. So the Qatar, they don't have, out of these 26 players that is here, just one player that is playing outside their league. Mm. So I don't, I don't expect anything from them. Aside the crowd sharing them up tomorrow and enjoying themselves as a host nation, I don't see anything coming out from them. That's just true. Well, we just have to take that from Vincent there. Let's quickly unveil the remaining four teams. We will unveil Qatar, Ecuador, and Wales. Let's continue as we talk about other teams. Costa Rica will also be playing now. Let's look at your squ uh, squad list. Kilonavas. Fantastic goalkeeper, Extemba Alvarado, Patrick uh, Siquera. In defense, we have Francisco Calvo. You have Juan Pablo Vargas, Kenda Watson. Uh, you have Oscar Duarte, Daniel Chacon, uh, Keisha Fula, Carlos Martinez, Brian Oviedo, Ronald Matarita. In the midfield, Yetzin Tejeda, Celso Borges, Justin Salas, Ryan Wilson, Gaston Torres, Douglas Lopez, Jewison Bennett. You have Alvaro Zamora, Anthony Hernandez, Brandon Aguilera. You have Brian Ruiz. And the forward, Joel Campbell, Anthony Contreras, and you have Johan Venegas. Those are the players of Costa Rica. As we move straight to Serbia, in Europe now, Marko Dimitrovic, Pe uh, Pridrag Radkovic, Vanja Milikovic service. You have a defender, Sivan Mitrovic, Nikola Milik Milenkovic, Strahinja Pavlovic, Milos Velkovic, Filip Ladinovic, Stranger Erakovic, you have Jean Babic in the midfield, it's uh, Nemanja Gudel, Sage Milinkovic, the one you call SMS, Sasa Lukic, Marko Grujic, Philip Kostic, Huros Rasic, you have Nemanja Maximovic, Ivan Illich, you have Andreja Sinkovic and Delko Lasovic at the forward, Dusan Tadic, Alexander Mitrovic, Dusan Vlahovic. Philip uh, Jurisic, you have Luka Jovic, and you have Nemanja uh, Radonjic, uh, Radonjic there. Those are the players uh, that are representing Serbia at the World Cup. And quickly, we've got Switzerland now. Switzerland, they have uh, uh, Grigor Kobel, Jan Sommer, 
Jonas Oblin and Philip Cohn, defenders Manuel Akonji, that's a name that you know is familiar with Nigeria. Yeah. You can take that away. Yeah. Ire Kongmat, Nico Elverdis, Fabian Shah, Sylvain Widman, Ricardo Rodriguez, Ed Milson Fernandez. In the midfield, you have Michael Abicha, Jordan Shakiri, Renato Stefan, Granit Xhaka, Denis Zakaria, Fabien Frey, Remo Frula, Noah Okafo. Of course, you know this, I go rather there. <laughs> I have Fabian Ryder, Adam Jashari, and the forward will be Brill Mbolo, Ruben Vargas, Jibri So, Harris Severovich, and Christian. Those are the players, and we have uh, Japan will be left, and now Japan, uh, they will also be there. Suichi Gonda, Daniel Chimik, you have A.G. Kawashima as the goalkeepers, defenders. We have Miki Yamane, Hiroki Sakai, Maya Yuchida, Takahiro Yutomiyazu, Shogo Taniguchi, Hiroki Ito, Yuto Nagamoto, Nagatomo, and Ko Itakura. In the midfield, you have Wataru Endo, Idemashi Morita, Aotanaka, Gaku Shiba Saki, Kaoru Mitoma, Daichi Kamada, Risu Duan, Junyan uh, Ito, Takumi Minamino, you have Takef uh, Tekfusa Kubo, Yuki Soma. The forward, uh, they actually have Daisen Maeda, Takumo, uh, Takuma Azano, Chuto Machino, and Ayese Yuida. Those are the players uh, for those countries now. Seven that we roll out to compete. That's the two nations that we've been unveiling ahead of the work that will be starting tomorrow. And it's just uh, here. It has to be on. Vincent, those names alone can be <laughs> tongue-twisting. That, 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 that's, that's, you try mentioning that's those Serbia's players. They look mm. like cousins. Seriously. The name looks so familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. But at least, even though we are not going to the World Cup, we just have to celebrate all the countries yeah, that yeah. are going to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. Quickly, let's look at uh, uh, 2022 FIFA World Cup group stage fixtures. Uh, as we run it down now, Vincent will be doing much work here quickly. Let's look at those uh, fixtures. We know that Ecuador versus uh, Ecuador will be facing uh, Qatar, Qatar. Uh, that's yeah. the first match. Okay. Ah, tomorrow, tomorrow, Qatar, Qatar. That, that will be an interesting you match. You say Qatar, they are just uh, no, no, uh, they, they, are, are to, uh, they, to they just the want to complete the team. The, they had a very good qualification uh, play. They played ten matches, lost just one. Mm -hmm. And they have one of the if you when you were rolling down the the list. the list here, they are one of the youngest team in the competition, the Ecuador. So tomorrow, I think I think they will they will, they, they would they would. They, they, they will defeat Qatar. I cannot say that. It's, it's a football. Anything can happen. But from the statistics and the way it looks, I think they will, they, they will take the day tomorrow. You believe Ecuador is going to be Qatar, right? Yes, yes. But at times, football can just change, you know? De de definitely. And if they beat Qatar tomorrow, they will be the second team not to come out of their group. Because I know the only hope they have in that group is to beat Ecuador tomorrow. Mm. And if that doesn't happen, I know they cannot beat Senegal or Netherlands. So the only hope they have is that to beat Ecuador tomorrow, which is very... I don't know the right English to use. It's, it's, it's not realistic for me. Oh my goodness. Okay, yes. we're looking at Qatar versus Ecuador. Well, that match will be coming up. And at least, uh, uh, no matter how you look at it, we just have to celebrate the fact that, yes, World Cup is here, it's starting, and we look at the opening match there. Although that will be the only match for Sunday, the opening game there, the first day of the 2022 FIFA World Cup taking place in Qatar. Well, it's here. You can't take that away. You just have to say that's why we're trying to make sure to, uh, we at least uh, prep you before the time, before our World Cup starts proper on Sunday. So you're looking at the fixtures of those games that will be coming up. Uh, we'll have other fixtures that will be coming up, although on Sunday and also Monday, Monday, uh, looking at the matches there, uh, even though uh, we are waiting for them. Okay, we have England, England versus Iran. Uh, this is another game. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, this is your job now, Vincent. <laughs> on, on TV mm. or on paper, yes. England will take the day, England against Iran, England will take the day, but sometime like this, miracle happen in World Cup, surprises. Because mm. nobody believes Croatia will play the last World Cup final against France. Mm. So definitely, they're going to have, they have, yeah, England, they have all the players, the most prestigious uh, country, uh, country when it comes to football, they are rich in everything. Player, current player in form like Harry Kane. Uh, the last time I think he's a joint high goal scorer in mm -hmm. the competition. But going out with uh, Harry Magwe, that is a calamitous Harry Magwe. That the coach came out officially to say, Harry Magwe, yes, it's not doing well for Manchester United, but as long as English team is consigned, Harry Magwe has automatic shirts in, uh, in English team. Mm -hmm. So there might be a surprise. When you okay, between England, Iran, and England. Iran and England. Then Senegal, the only team I'm supporting as an African is Senegal. Mm. Their first appearance came in 2002, when they fought their first appearance, they got to the quarterfinal. So I'm expecting a miracle. I, I'm, I'm, even, I'm tipping Senegal 
to go as much as semi-final in this, in this competition. After all, Senegal did it against France. Yeah. He shocked France with he, he, a, goal, yes. a long goal they scored in that yes. game. France never recovered. And yeah. it's, it's same thing can clearly repeat itself mm. against the Netherlands. Though, That's why though the upset of uh, Sadio Mane, mm. because they announced, the Senegalese FA announced just yesterday evening that he cannot make it. So, uh, like, I, like I said, uh, uh, I was actually talking with someone and I told him, I said, well, uh, from the way it is, uh, uh, Sadio Mane's injury could be a blessing in disguise for a particular player mm -hmm. that will be unveiling himself, uh, sh uh, uh, showcasing himself to the whole world. It's, it's, that yes, there's no Sadio Mane here, but I can do this job and that p player will actually shine. Yeah, it's it is very. It's always like that in the competition. It is very. This, even at the absence of Sadio Mane, they have um, they have Sa that plays for West Ham. It's a very good player. Just that all eyes on Sadio Mane, and it has always been delivering for them. Mm. When it comes to a, a, a larger state, like this has always been delivering for them. So that his absence might be a blessing, and it might be a cause too. Mm. So it's very possible. It is very possible. USA versus Wales. Uh, look at this game. With Gareth Bale versus USA. Uh, are he, plays, he plays his football in USA. USA yeah. But he will play for <laughs> he will play for Wales. Yeah. Mm. There are two there are two average teams in the competition. Mm. Let me just break it down like this. If Aaron Ramsey and Gareth Bale come to the party, Wales will take the day. If not, USA could actually USA could, win. Yeah. Well, according to Vincent, it could be a win-win for either, either Wales or USA. Yeah. Looking at the matches that will be coming up on Monday in the World, at the World Cup, where it is starting on Sunday, Qatar versus Ecuador. Although we see a one more fixture, if you can see, get it there. Before we go, Argentina, Argentina versus Saudi Arabia on Tuesday. Big one there, Denmark, Tunisia, Mexico, Poland, France, Australia. Which one is the most, uh, for you, which uh, match are you picking out? Uh, I think... Um... Argentina, Saudi Arabia, I think it's a walkover for that one. Hmm. They are the, are you, uh, people are already tipping them as, as the champion already. Yes, but I yeah. remember in 2010, they also picked them as the champion. 2010 hmm. uh, in South Africa. If, they, uh, the, are you, they are Argentina on 35 match on beating. Let me, let, let me quickly uh, put this in. You remember the set of uh, Sebastian yes. Veron, Hanan Crespo, Ayala, or Tech? Yeah. Mention their yes. name. You'll yeah. be scared. They, they just, and another thing is, they just broke, they won South America in 2021. They just broke the yoke of 25 years trophyless. Mm. So that too, could come to play. Mm. So yeah, I'm are, only saying, yeah. despite the fact that they have been rated as the, one that, the team that will beat in this competition, yeah. they could be sure. They could if, be, they, if anybody wants to cop upset to Argentina, not mm. Saudi Arabia. Okay, let's yes. wait and see. Maybe, who knows? Maybe <laughs> Saudi Arabia actually borrow some leave from country that shock Argentina. Well, let's see what's going to happen in Denmark, Tunisia. The, 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 they call themselves the Danish Dynamite. So, mm. you, the Tunisia, they have the record of love. They, they've been there since time. They've not gone out of the group stage before. So I don't think it's, there, there's no difference. It's the same yeah. thing. There's no difference. Well, Mexico, Poland, another one. I, I'm looking at uh, Mexico. Mexico, yeah, they are, they are well. more experienced when it comes to World Cup. And mm. Poland, we're only looking at the way Robert Lewandowski there. So, I, I, I give it to Mexico. Well, France, yeah. Australia? France. France, there are, there are some issues in the camp presently. Mm. Presently, we are hearing Benzema, uh, Benzema and uh, Varane, they are training differently. And hotel accommodation issues coming up this afternoon that we are hearing. But no matter how it is, they, will go, they, they are going to take the day. They, we have regular people who are definitely going to be out of the stage, out of the group stage, which happened to like this France, Denmark, Mexico, and uh, Argentina. Definitely are going to be out of the group. Well, we wait to see what's going to be happening at the World Cup. Just unveiling those matches for you to have a feel of what's to be expected Sunday, Monday, and also Tuesday. Those are the games that will be coming up. And we wait to see who shock who at the World Cup 2022, Qatar. Now, let's leave Qatar aside. Let's quickly give you some uh, matches that will be coming up. Despite the fact that World Cup is here, the FA Women's Super League fixtures. Uh, some women will be playing over there in England. We just have to look at those fixtures quickly before we move on to look at some international friendlies. Everton women will be playing against Manchester City for this weekend. Arsenal versus Manchester United. Chelsea women versus Tottenham or Sport. Reading against Aston Villa. Liverpool travel away to Brighton and Hove Albion women. They play them. And West Ham United women versus Leicester City women. Those are the fixtures uh, slated for this weekend. And we expect all these games to come up. And quickly, let's look at the international friendlies that will also be coming up uh, this 
despite the fact that the World Cup is here, let's look at those fair friendlies that are supposed to be coming up uh, over there uh, across different places in, in the world. United Arab Emirates play against Kazakhstan. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire play uh, against uh, Burkina Faso, Albania, Armenia, Gibraltar, Andorra, Kosovo, Federal Island. You have Turkey against Czech Republic and Algeria. You also be facing uh, Sweden. At least all the teams are really trying to fight tune themselves ahead of the World Cup. Uh, before we go uh, quickly, FIFA President Infantino to stand on a post for Tottenham. That will be the story we look at quickly. FIFA President Infantino uh, to stand on a post uh, for Tottenham. Uh, this particular story came up uh, just yesterday, and a lot of people are looking at. Well, nobody's opposing. I, 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 I don't know what I don't know what particular thing that is in that uh, position. Hmm. Where's the Blatter got there? <laughs> yeah. Joao Havelange was there before Blatter. Blatter, Blatter, Blatter also did, him. and now, now I don't know what they are telling those people that are supposed to contest for the post. That you know, imagine on the post. Don't, it's actually doing well anyway. Oh, do, yes. yes. And maybe it's that's the yastic that nobody's yes. ready to comp uh, compete against him. So it's on a post for him. Uh, Infantino uh, will be going free uh, there. Well, Argentina and Uruguay have each taken 900 kilograms of meat to Qatar. <laughs> trying to prep you up on Sunday Qatar now on the light hand note. So players and staff can have a taste of home during the World Cup. They call their, uh, the, the, their meat a, a, a yasso or thereabout. Uh, they, are, they said their meat is the best in the world. Yeah. That's uh, Uruguay uh, meat. That, that, uh, that, <laughs> that, that, that's a psychology. I think it's give them a preparation that mm. okay, feel at home, enjoy yourself, don't feel as if you're in, in a strange land. So it's it's actually good for for them. Mm -hmm. Yes, it gives them a right frame of mind to, to start to begin to start their match. A right frame of mind coming from Vicent Okara there, where we're talking about Argentina and Uruguay going to the World Cup with their own meat, 900 kilograms of meat per country. They have taken it to Qatar now. They want to make sure they have the best of home meat, at least let them enjoy themselves as they play their football. And now we look at this, this last one that has to do with AC Milan and Roma are keen on Leon midfielder Jose Ayoa, a player that a lot of cross really wants to buy fantastic midfielder AC Milan and Roma are actually keen on this Leon player fantastic player any day mm. any time what very good there was a time Arsenal almost signed him which yes they I, almost they yeah, almost. almost signed him I have, I have an Arsenal friend who I'll tell you to calm down this guy will come but at the mm. end of the day they knock about it's an injury prone player if you look at the injury history and it's not that good the way he used to I think all the speculation got into him this is has not been doing well statistically so it's not video, but it's a fantastic play anytime, any day. Okay, now, uh, even though we've, uh, we, let's, let's just digress a bit. Mm -hmm. Looking at the World Cup is starting tomorrow, and attention is on Qatar, uh, this and that. Despite all the noise, despite all this and that, finally, Qatar is here. If they ask you as a Nigerian, that uh, you know your country is not going to the World Cup, how are, how are you feeling about this World Cup? Uh, mixed feelings. Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes mm. I'm sad. The fact that when I think about the fact that Nigeria is not playing, though it's, I'm, I'm, I'm less pressured from that angle, but I want to be pressured to watch in Nigeria. Mm. But it, it's not easy just to see and be watching. It's, it's a good thing. When World Cup comes, there's a diff different atmosphere that comes with it. Like now, I'm looking out for the World Cup. So, you know, it's a very sweet feeling that comes, but that Nigeria is not there. There will be this mixed feeling, definitely. When I, when, when, what, what, when, when, most especially now, when maybe another team, Africa team, will be doing well. Now, at that point, we wish now wish this Nigeria is there. Hmm. Yes, that is just. That is it. Now, uh, well, maybe let me do it this way. Uh, for the World Cup 2022, which country are you tipping to lift this trophy? Uh, I have two countries, man. No, is, pick one. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's pick definitely one. Be, Only it, one. Well, well, it, two it, countries will win the World Cup, so pick one. Uh, the people are tipping Argentina, I'm tipping Brazil. Are you serious? Yes, okay, they, now they, why? Uh, Brazil. If you see their, their squad, all their forward, from the midfield to the forward, they are, they are on form. Mm. All of them. Mm. What about the defense? Start, uh, how the defense. How they do it? As, as long as you score me, when, when Wenger was doing well for Arsenal, he doesn't mind if you score him. Score me, I'll win you. Mm. That's always, you can win me 5-3. I can win you 5-3. Just call me. That is fine. But I will score you and win. Football is a game of goal. When I score you, I win. If it, from Vicente Junior in Madrid, he's doing, he won the Champions League last season. Gabriel Martinelli, Rafinha, the king, the king of all of them, the Nima. They are the Samba boys. Those boys are ready to Samba this time around. Mm. They are doing, all of them are doing well. I will remind you, <laughs> uh, in the next 28 days, <laughs> okay. by the time, or 29 days rather, by the time the World Cup is over, 
You understand? They will look at if you're Samba boys. <laughs> Maybe you are from Brazil. No, no, no. no. If you're Samba form, boys. Current form, the, mm. the attack is the attack is mad. Mm. Current form. Mm. Current form. And, and Nima uh, is doing well. And Brazilian players, they have this culture. When they put on that Brazil jersey, they are different players. But remember, for a while now, uh, they've not been able to. Yeah, so right. do, do, you, do you know how those players celebrated when they invited? Them? Do you know? Yesterday, and Anthony in Manchester United went to bought he bought four hundred thousand uh, pounds a car just to celebrate that he fought the Brazil and Brazil called him. Mm. So uh, that, that, that alone that's is enough reason for he knows, he knows, he knows apart from qualifying, he mm. knows the area of stars they have for him to qualify to, to be picked. You understand? For him to be picked, so, so he has to he go knows, there and, and play where. Now, okay, let's look at uh, if uh, your Brazilian samba boys <laughs> will win the cup. We'll no. be looking at the World Cup uh, proper is here. And uh, we can't wait to see the first player that will tap the ball by the time the referee mm -hmm. actually blow the whistle uh, come Sunday. That's tomorrow, where Qatar will be facing Ecuador, the host nation, with the mammoth uh, support coming from people, all the fans from Qatar, or you call it the Qataris, they are ready uh, for this. And uh, they will be making sure they actually make it happen. Well, that will be a wonderful one from Qatar hosting the World Cup. And for Vincent uh, Okara, we really appreciate your time coming on the show. Thanks for having me. And uh, for you out there, I want to tell you that you should enjoy yourself. Even though Nigeria is not going to the World Cup, support Ghana, Mex uh, uh, Tunisia, Senegal, Cameroon, and also Morocco. All of them, they are all Africans. We are brothers. We are a continent. And we believe that we can do it. Support all of them. And let's see who will actually break that particular genes by getting to the semi-final for the first time in the history of Africa. From me to you out there, I always say sport is business and fitness. Have a splendid weekend.